Hey friends, it's Mari. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have a project for the Justnick Digital Cut File design team and I'm going to be working on a piece of basil marshmallow cardstock that I have applied Vicky Booten white gesso to and I'm just going to show you here I've applied that gesso all over the entire surface of this paper because this particular gesso tends to um, change color a little bit when it dries and I, I didn't want there to be any color variation on my paper so I applied it to the entire sheet which totally fixes that problem. Now what I am going to do today is start off here with a Vicki Booten stencil. This is one of the stencils from her most recent release which included um, the Let's Wander collection and I'm going to be using some of the matte acrylic gel medium. I'm going to apply this medium through this stencil with this palette knife here. This happens to be a Vicki Booten palette knife and this is going to dry matte and clear. So that's actually a really cool um, property of this particular medium. And what's going to happen is it's going to resist the other products um, somewhat that are put over top of it. So um, although it will, um, some of the colors will, will um, cover it slightly, it will still show up. It's got that texture will still show up underneath the other the mediums that you put on top of it which is a pretty cool thing about it and I really like using this medium so you just see here where I'm going to just continue to add this onto the project this is a really easy medium to work with I like it it's um, really fun it does take a little bit of time for it to dry I did use my heat tool to help it dry but I also left it on my desk for a little bit as well so that I didn't have to put too much heat on my paper and, and then warp it a whole bunch. So I just let it, some of it I let dry on its own. And you just see me here scooping the extra back into the bottle there. And now I'm just going to take that stencil and everything to my sink and clean it up right away so that that stuff doesn't dry onto my, my stencil. Now I'm taking some of the art crayons from Vicki Booten. I'm scribbling them out onto a piece of plastic acetate. This plastic is actually the cover plastic from Vicki's foundations paper, which I have completely used up. I need to restock that stuff because I love it. It's um, amazing, 140 pound cardstock paper that is really great for mixed media techniques. This is another stencil from the recent release, Let's Wander, and it is a really large, loose, scripty stencil. I love it. It's super cool. And I wanted to add a larger kind of pattern over top of that circular pattern that was in that other stencil. So I'm taking the Vicky Booten stencil brush. I've picked up that crayon pigment. Um, my brush is dry and the pigment is dry and you just um, pick it up using a circular motion with the stencil and then apply it onto your paper with that stencil in that way and it's really fun and the cool thing is the texture from that dried um, acrylic gel medium underneath pops up once you apply this crayon so you can still see the pattern of that acrylic gel medium underneath with the application of the pigment over top of it. So love it and I am going to make sure that I use up as much of the pigment over top of that gel medium before I go ahead and clean the rest of the pigment off and go to the next color. So you'll just see me take a baby wipe and I'm going to just um, rub the brush on that and then I'll take that brush and I will dry it on some, there's hardly any pigment coming off of that because I've used most of it up on my paper. And then I'll take that and I will rub it on some dry paper towel just to make sure that it's super, super dry here. You'll just see me burnish that on my paper towel. And now I'm ready to pick up another color. And this time I'm going to use the really pretty vibrant, um, I thought I was going to use that pink, but I'm going to use the yellow. And I am eventually going to use the pink. So I'm going to get this on there. I'm just going to do exactly the same thing again with all of the other colors of crayon that you see on my desk there. So I'm going to use kind of that orangey yellow, the bright yellow, which I'm using right now. And then I'm also going to use the pink. And I just love this color combination. I think it's super pretty and it coordinates well with all of the different products in Vicky's different 
releases of mixed media. And I am going to use a little bit of her texture paste on here as well in the pink, the yellow, and the teal also. So you'll see that here right away. I'm just going to add this pink on here and then I will also add that orangey yellow as well. So I love using mixed media um, on my projects. Um, I'm not afraid to try the different techniques, but what's really great about Vicky's products is she does a really great job of educating people how to use them because she's got a Facebook Live at least every Friday night, although now she's doing Facebook Lives on Wednesdays as well. So make sure you check out her mixed media page over on Facebook. Um, if you haven't, if I, I will try my best to remember to link up to that in the description box below. But I wanted to use a whole bunch of this, these different um, mediums here on my paper to, um, to uh, be the base for my cut file from Just Nick today. So that's, that's what I'm going for here. I'm just trying to create this background to then put the cut file over top of this base. And I love this technique. I love how this looks when I'm all finished here. So there you can just see I'm adding that last bit of color with the crayons. And there's the little photo that I'm going to be using here. I love this picture. It is so sweet. It is my niece's little girl, um, her dog, Pippa, and it's the picture of the little girl and the doggy looking out the window. And I can imagine that there's a little conversation going on. And I just thought this was super sweet. So I wanted to um, scrapbook this for her. So now I've just uh, added a little bit of water to that crayon on the acetate there. I'm taking the uh, brush, adding a little bit of water there, like I said, and then just doing some tiny little splatters with a small brush. I will switch to a larger brush, brush later and add larger splatters. You can just see here, I'm sopping up some of the extra um, liquid there. I don't want the, um, the little splatters to be too dark. I just want them to sort of be subtle. Now, one thing that you always have to remember when you're doing a mixed media background is lots of this is going to get covered up, but that is okay because really what you want is just bits and pieces of it to pop out around the other other elements that you're going to add over top. Now this color is called, and I'm just looking at the container here, Crushed Pineapple. It is so pretty and so vibrant. It is super vibrant. So, you know, you have to remember that when you're using it. If you want it to be less vibrant, you can tone it down with a little bit of white texture paste, or you could put a little bit of white acrylic paint with it. I'm sure that would also mix together with it and, um, you know, use a lighter tone of it. I'm not afraid. I wasn't afraid to use it full strength because I am actually going to use something else over top of it besides the cut file. So you'll see that I'll be getting there in a minute. That teal is called Blue Hawaiian. It is absolutely gorgeous. And like I said before, um, Vicky's, all of her different mediums coordinate together. So her, um, for example, her acrylic paints, she's got acrylic paints in many of these same colors that she has in her texture paste. So that is a very cool thing about how all of her different products work together. Now I have taken a 12 by 12 stencil and I do not know if this is the crafters workshop or what this is. I've had it in my stash for a really long time, like probably five years. And I am taking some texture paste, some white opaque texture paste, and I'm running this all over the entire layout so that it's like this cohesive layer over the whole thing so that it just kind of like brings everything together in all of the mixed media that I'm using here. Um, so that it's all nice and coordinated. That um, is some schminky texture paste and I have, I keep a layer of Baker's parchment over top of the container before I put the lid on it so it doesn't dry out. Now here is the beautiful floral background cut file and I have cut that very large because I just wanted to use a piece of it on the left side. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to tear off in like a little rounded sort of way. I'm going to tear off the right edge of my heavy paper here. And I'm going to adhere that down to a piece of Avalanche Basil textured cardstock. I've sewn down the left side with my sewing machine. And now I'm going to pop up my... Um, 
my cup file onto the layout with some foam adhesive squares. So I'm putting those foam adhesive squares down and I'm going to take the release paper off the back of those and then I am going to stick that on top of my mixed media background on the left side over to the left. And then that just leaves a really obvious place in my mind for me to put my photo and my embellishments. So you're just going to see me um, getting this stuck down here. And when I'm all finished that, I am ready to place my photo onto the layout and start doing the embellishments. So the photo is in color. I have uh, used some filters on it in, uh, or I have, I should say, I have um, adjusted it in Lightroom. I didn't use a complete filter. So I've adjusted it by desaturating it and um, upping the exposure and a few other little things that I did tweak on the photo. And now I've just taken some craft foam, adhered that to the back of the photo, put a little bit of liquid adhesive on that craft foam, and now I'm sticking that to a white mat that matches the um, white cardstock that's the base of the entire layout. So that's more of that avalanche basil textured cardstock. Now I took some uh, floral paper from the Vicki Booten Let's Wander collection. I thought these florals matched the cut file really nicely. And I have fussy cut, I fussy cut basically two thirds of that paper. I'm not going to use nearly even close to all of the flowers. I put the rest of them into um, the embellishments with that collection, but I'm just going to use those to do the majority of the embellishing of this layout. So you can see that smaller little floral piece I've popped up on some foam adhesive. Here I've got... Um, some more I'm just going to adhere flat onto the project there on the right of the photo and then take another smaller little floral cluster of the aqua colored flowers and pop that up on a little bit of foam adhesive and put that on the other side. I didn't want them right across from each other. I kind of wanted them to be sort of like diagonal. So one on the left and then a little bit lower on the right. And then my last cluster is going to be in the bottom right hand corner of the layout. Now I did grab some uh, stickers that have some phrases on them. The orange one says, what a view. I thought that was perfect for this photo. And that is from Let's Wander. I'm just gonna pop that up on a little bit of foam adhesive. Use my tweezers to help me place that just underneath that little tiny floral cluster there. And I'm going to take another sentiment sticker from an older uh, collection. I think maybe from Wildflower and Honey. And it says the little things. And I will adhere that to the left side of the photo. I'm also going to take a camera sticker from that 6 by 12 sticker sheet from Let's Wander and put that in the cluster on the right side of the photo as well. And then here you can see I'm going to do some more embellishing with the florals in the bottom right hand corner. I just thought that seemed like a really logical place to do a little more of the cluster that's um, going to bring those florals in again. I really like how this looks. The ones that are on the bottom, I'm just going to adhere with a little bit of liquid adhesive and then the next layer, I'm gonna pop up on some foam adhesive and that pink flower that's on the very top, I actually don't use that. I ended up using a die cut from the ephemera pack for a floral there just to change it up a little bit. And actually to that little cluster that I'm working on there, I added one of those adorable little envelopes with the little note card in it from the Let's Wander collection. And I actually forgot to do that before I shut the camera off. So you'll see that in the still shots at the end of the video here. So watch for that. So there's that die cut ephemera flower. I'm going to just put a little bit of foam adhesive on the back of that, pop that up. And that's gonna be it for that cluster other than that little envelope that I add off camera. So now I'm just looking at the sticker sheet, seeing if there's anything else that I want to add. I do actually end up adding a flower sticker up higher, but I end up taking that off after. I don't really like the looks of it in that spot. So you'll see me putting it there, but I end up taking it off after. So I just felt like it was sort of up there in no man's land. Um, I did leave a spot in the top portion, the top right of the layout, 
to give my niece a chance to do some journaling on this layout. I mean, I'm not going to tell this story. This is, you know, this is her little girl. And, you know, if it was my little girl, I'd, I'd have a, a little story to tell about this picture, but I didn't take the photo. And um, I just thought it would be nice to give her a chance to, to just write about um, the relationship probably between, between her and the, the little pup and, you know, she's, she's, uh, their only little munchkin so far. She's going to be two this summer. And I know that, um, her and this little doggy spend a lot of time together. So it's just so cute. And, and I'm sure that there are stories to tell that go along with this photo. So that's a good spot for her to do that. So that little, um, sticker says the little things. I like how it has, um, black font on it and that is going to coordinate nicely there you can see that you and me title that I'm going to use here and that is from I want to say that is from the wildflower and honey thickers um, sheet and there are a ton of really great phrases on that in that collection if you have it you can check that out on that on that uh, phrase sheet if you haven't used it yet uh, Wildflower and Honey was another just amazing Vicki Booten collection. Really loved it. Um, but um, getting back to the cut file here, I love how the cut file is the focal point of the layout for embellishments. It is beautiful and I just think it is a stunning piece uh, next to and underneath that photograph and I think it's perfect. So I loved it so much and I really wanted to use it on a project this week when I was working on my Just Nick um, project. So really like how that does the heavy lifting on this layout as is always the case when you're using a beautiful cut file like this. So really happy with how it turned out. Now I'm just kind of checking out the layout. I'm looking at it. I'm showing you here where I think would just be sort of like a really great spot for some journaling strips. And I'm looking at the rest of the layout and I'm thinking about what I might like to do to finish it up. And I ended up going into my stash to find some stickles and I'm going to add some gold stickles here and there. I, if you follow me on my card making, especially I'm a huge fan of adding some sparkle to my projects. It doesn't really matter what project it is I'm working on, um, but specifically cards, I almost always, 100% of the time, add some sort of shiny blingy item at the end when I'm embellishing. And so I was thinking about that today and I thought, you know what, why, why don't I use my stickles more in my scrapbooking? So I went and grabbed my gold stickles and I am going to just add some really, really subtle little dots of stickles to the center of the flowers in the cut file to the center of the flowers in those fussy cut flowers and I love the sparkle and shine that this adds to this layout I think it just finishes it off beautifully so it was just that little something at the end to add that I feel like just um, made it just look even better so I'm really happy with how this project turned out um, it's so much fun, again, to scrapbook pictures of little, little people. And I don't have little ones anymore. And I have scrapbooked uh, and re-scrapbooked <laughs> so many pictures of my kids when they were little. And it's been nice to have the opportunity to scrap some photos of this little munchkin. And um, my niece did tell me that it was okay to to do some photos of her. So my sister and I, um, and I've, I think I've mentioned this in a previous video, are working on a little project for her. So I think that'll be fun moving forward. And when I'm, you know, trying to find pictures to scrapbook, it is nice to have a few uh, other options other than my own adult kids who don't seem to send me the photos when I'm asking. And um, I just, I guess, especially now, I don't get to see them as much um, in a social setting or we're just not doing much. I mean, Jordan's working all the time, but you know, there's only so many pictures I can take of him at his computer. So, <laughs> so anyway, it's just, uh, it's nice to have a few other photos to take. I am going to leave um, the link below for the Just Nick uh, cut file shop. Make sure you check that out. Uh, absolutely love this cut file and 
Uh, Nicole has just the most amazing designs in her shop. So make sure you check it out. And thank you so much for stopping by today. I do have some still shots here at the end. Don't forget to look for that envelope that's in that bottom right hand corner. Have an amazing day, everybody. Stay safe, stay well, and take care. And I'll see you again here on my channel another time. Bye-bye.